Color temperature is one of those things that can have a huge impact on how your wardrobe looks on you. But unlike more obvious things like cut, fit, etc., this one is not super obvious and not that easy to figure out. We know that we all have a certain skin undertone, which if you know yours, that is great. That is half the battle. But within that, how do you know how to choose the colors that are going to be the most flattering for your undertone? And does that mean that you can't wear colors outside of your own color temperature? In this video, I'm going to give you the basic tools for understanding color temperature so that you can begin to figure out which colors are going to work best for your wardrobe. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Fernanda and I make videos to help you build a wardrobe that you love. You've stumbled onto part two of the color series. If you missed part one, I highly recommend you start with that one. I will leave you the playlist linked in the cards up here. You can click on the card, it'll take you straight onto video one and then we'll bring you back here. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos every Thursday. In color theory, some colors are considered warm and some are considered cool. There's many colors, we know that, but out of the primary and secondary colors, red, orange, and yellow are considered warm, and green, blue, and violet are considered cool. Now, every person has either a warm or a cool undertone. It is possible to have a neutral undertone, but it's more rare than most people realize. And for the most part, most people are going to tilt either one way or the other, even if it's not super obvious at first. As I mentioned in the last video, there are two basic ways to use color in a design or in a color plan, contrast or harmony. Now, when it comes to colors that are going to be most flattering on your skin tone, you really want to go for harmony as opposed to contrast, which means that you want to go for hues that are going to be on the same side of the color wheel as your undertone. So a person with a warm undertone is going to look best in reds, oranges, and yellows, where a person with a cool undertone is going to look best in greens, blues, and violets. Now, olive undertones, which are green undertones because olives can be green, are essentially at their core cool tones because green is a color on the cooler side of the color wheel. So they will also look best in cool colors like blues, greens, and violets. While this basic guideline can be very successful, it's not all black and white. And yes, I did just use a colored pun, so thumbs up if you like it. <laughs> because even within specific colors, it is possible to have warm and cool undertones. But this is good news, because what this means is that regardless of what your undertone is, you are not limited to only wearing a side of colors in the color wheel that is going to match your own undertone. What this means is that if you really understand and master your own undertone, then you can start to look for clothing in whatever color you like, but with an undertone that is really going to match your own temperature. You could alternatively also wear those colors that are not going to flatter you the most in garments that are really away from your face, like in bottoms or shoes or something like that. But I digress, that's just a different solution. Now, some colors are universal and they really are flattering on all skin tones. And for the most part, they're called the jewel tones. But if you think of the jewel tones, emerald, ruby, sapphire, violet, whatever the violet stone is, and all of those, for the most part, those lay on the cool side of the color wheel. But where knowing color temperature really comes into play is when you want to pull off those colors that are very polarizing or difficult to pull off if you are not of that same color temperature. So if this wasn't confusing enough, I did mention earlier in the video that it is possible for every color to have its own undertone. So it is possible to have cool, warm hues and warm, cool hues. Don't worry, I will show you a few examples. But before we do that, I want to remind you of something I mentioned in the last video. First, color perception is always relative. So really the best way to figure out the undertone of a color is to compare it to other colors in the same color family. And second, lighting plays a huge factor when it comes to color perception because light itself has its own color temperature. For example, if you think of candlelight, candlelight is a very warm light. It's very yellow and it's very inviting. But if in contrast, you think of fluorescent lighting, that is a very stark light and it's considered very cool lighting. The best light to use for color perception is really white light. And the best example of that is sunshine. So if you can, when figuring out color perception or even your own skin undertone, it's really best to either be outside on open shade 
or near a window because that will give you the most accurate read. So let's start with those examples. First, we're gonna start on the cool side of the color wheel and the most polarizing color on the cool side is blue-violet. The way to warm up a cool color is to add a primary or secondary warm color, so red or yellow. Now in this case, I am going to add red because it's closer to it on the color wheel and it is going to change the appearance of that color the least. If I were to go with yellow, it can start to change it and like make it look more green or more brown. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to warm up a color or not, it is going to change the appearance of that color. So starting with blue violet, I'm going to very little by little start adding red. So you can see how it starts to change the color and it starts to appear warmer and it goes from a very cool violet, almost blue, to almost a magenta. So if this is a color that you personally really like and you are cool toned, then great, you can wear it as it is. But if you are warm toned, then you can choose a warmer blue violet. Maybe not all the way warm so that it looks so magenta, but if you choose the second one from the right, it will still appear blue violet, but it will suit your skin tone a lot better. Similarly, on the warm side, I have orange, which can be a very polarizing color to wear if you don't have warm undertone. But little by little, I'm gonna start adding a cool color to cool it up. In this case, I could add blue, I could add green, even blue violet, but the one that is going to change it the least is really going to be green. So incrementally, I'm gonna start adding green little by little, and you can see how it changes. And if you've ever seen fresh squeezed orange juice, you know that this is exactly the color scheme that it can be. So if you have a warm undertone, you're gonna pull off orange very well. But if you have a cool undertone and you still wanna wear orange, all you have to do is look for a cooler shade of orange. Maybe not all the way cool because that will start appearing more green or blue depending on what color was added to it, but something cooler or on the cooler side will look more flattering on you. For the most part, most of us don't really have the privilege of picking the fabric that is gonna make up our clothes, unless you're making your own clothes, in which case I think that's fantastic. But most of us are really shopping, so we're limited by whatever is available on the market. So let's say you're out shopping and you come across a green blouse that is this color, and you're trying to figure out if it's a warm green or a cool green. There's two ways that you can figure this out. The first way that you can do this is to compare your shade of green to a true cool and a true warm color. So in this case, I'm gonna use a true yellow and a true blue so that you can start to see which one it is more similar to. So in this case, I think this shade of green is really warmer because it is more similar to the yellow. And if you still can't quite figure it out, then I recommend that you pick another shade of green from the store and compare that to your true cool and your true warm. So for example, here I have another shade of green, which you can tell is way cooler than the original one. So you can see that the original green in question is really a warm green. Now, personally, this is the way I prefer to do it because the other way to do it is to grab a bunch of different shades of green from everything that is around the store and to organize those from coolest to warmest and see where your color lies on the spectrum. Personally, I find that a little bit distracting because I tend to get distracted by chroma, which is the brightness of a color. So just because a color is a little bit muted doesn't necessarily mean that it's cool. It can be a pastel that is bright. So if you're not super familiar with chroma, I do recommend that you stick to the true cool and the true warm. But just in case, I do wanna show you what the other system looks like in practice. So let's say we went around the store and we collected all of these different greens. The green we're trying to compare is the green in the center of the screen. Now, if we arrange them from warm to cool, we can see that the color in question is warmer than some of the other ones, but it would be possible to get distracted by that minty teal color almost all the way to the cool side, which is why I personally prefer to do it the other way, but whatever is best for you. Let me give you one more very quick example that I think is going to come in very handy for you. Let's say you are cool tone and you are shopping for your perfect shade of red lipstick. Just because you are cool tone doesn't mean that red is not going to look good on you. You just have to find the right shade of red with a cool undertone. So let's say you picked this shade of red out of the many different shades at Sephora or wherever you are shopping and you're trying to figure out if it's a cool red or if it's a warm red. Because remember, just because it's a darker shade of red doesn't necessarily mean that it's a cool shade of red. 
Now, the first way we have to figure it out is to compare it to a true warm color and a true cool color. Now, I know it is going to be very difficult to find a blue lipstick and a yellow lipstick to compare it to, which is why I do recommend that you have your very own color wheel and something that you can bring with you whenever you're shopping so that you can compare colors. In this case, because I made this all up, I have a true yellow and a true blue. So in this case, I think this shade of red is really cooler because it has more in common with the blue than it does with the yellow. But just to compare it, I'm going to grab another shade of red and compare that to our true warm color and our true cool color. And you can see that the second shade of red is really much warmer because it has a lot more in common with the yellow than it does with the blue. So the original shade in question is a cool red and that will probably be very flattering on you. In the same way, perhaps in this case, it is easier to just find a bunch of different red lipsticks so that you can compare where it is on the color spectrum. So Sephora, you're likely to find a bunch of different red lipsticks and then compare that and see where the color that you like lies on the spectrum of temperature. So I kept the original red in the center as before and arranged them from warmer to cooler. So you can see that when they're arranged in a spectrum, the shade of red in question is really almost to the cooler side. So you're better off trying that one. Let me know in the comments if you've been able to find a shade of red lipstick that works very well on you. And if you've noticed if it's either cool or warm red. Because it is possible for each color to have its own undertone, this is great news for really our wardrobes because it means that it is entirely possible to have a cool color wheel and a warm color wheel. So regardless of whether you're cool tone or warm tone, yes, there are some colors that are going to be most flattering on you and that are going to be most obviously flattering, but that doesn't mean that you're only limited to those colors. If you really learn to understand undertone, you can choose to look for different colors in the color wheel that match your undertone and you can really wear the whole spectrum of color. It just might take a little longer to find the exact shade of your contrasting temperature that will look great on you. I hope you found this helpful in understanding color temperature. And if you still don't know what your very own skin undertone is, I do have a video coming on that later in the color series, I promise you. The reason why I haven't done it yet is because I've done a lot of research on it and I have yet to find a foolproof way that will work for everybody and I don't want to keep putting BS on the internet, frankly. And also, I am trying to nail down an expert, a color analyst that can come on the channel and really help us all figure it out. So if you're interested in seeing that and you would like me to bring on an expert, give this video a huge thumbs up and stay tuned for that. If you like this video, it would mean so much to me if you've shared with a friend who might find it helpful. And if you want to see a very good example of a capsule wardrobe in warm colors, but with cool undertones, my full capsule wardrobe is a great example of that. So I will leave it linked for you here in the cards so that you can take a look. And I'll see you in the comments over there. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.